Hey, howdy everyone. In the first couple of lectures, we have covered the importance of domain expertise and specific concepts, the subsurface context that was that's really required in order to build subsurface machine learning models. We then covered in the next set of lectures the fundamental probability and statistics concepts that are required. Now, if we return back to our Venn diagram, where we want to be, we're still missing one piece. We've got the domain expertise right here. We've got the statistics, the fundamental probability concepts right here. We really need to also cover the coding, the scripting, the use of open source tools in order to build these workflows. We need all three of them in order to do a good job at subsurface machine learning. So what we'll do in the next set of lectures is we'll talk about fundamental workflow construction and then talk about some basics fundamentals in working in Python with data. Why learn about workflow design and coding? Well, first and foremost, I would suggest that machine learning as an activity, a professional activity, is really the generation of workflows. It is a workflow requiring multiple steps in order to reach the project goal. There'll be specifying the goals or target. There'll be developing conceptual models, inferring statistics, trying to evaluate all of the features that are available to us. There's all kinds of steps involved. Data preparation is often about 90% of the effort. There's a lot that goes into working with our data. So we need to know how to put workflows together. We can't just plug and chug pick up a machine learning methodology off the shelf, and get an answer and be done. That would not be best practice. The most flexible and powerful tools in machine learning right now are open source. It's kind of funny, actually. We can use these readily available, freely available open source tools, and we can be doing immediately cutting edge work in machine learning. That's awesome. The world of brilliance is available to us. And when we use open source, we definitely maximize our ability to interrogate and understand our workflows. I've run into it all, all over the place when I've used CAN software. After I build my workflow and I look at my results, I realize a bit of a sinking feeling that I really don't know exactly how it happened. I don't know because often you run into proprietary code. The methods are not laid to bear for everybody to understand them. I would prefer to use methodologies that I understand at a theoretical level. I need to know what's going on under the hood to be comfortable with the results of my model. So at this point now to, re to resist or to avoid redundancy, I'm not going to record the lectures I'm going to show here. I have borrowed a series of three short lectures from the subsurface modeling course. What I've done is I've listed them here with links, the names of the lectures, so you should be able to get them quickly. They're within the subsurface modeling playlist on the Geostats Guy lectures channel. You should be able to find them. Let me know if you have trouble finding them. I would ask that you would go through these. The first one will talk about fundamental philosophical considerations for workflow design. Talk about the basic building block approach, get into a lot of issues around how do you deal with uncertainties, iteration, learning while modeling. Yeah, pretty cool stuff. It was focused on the subsurface geostatistical type modeling, but I think it's completely relevant to what we're doing in machine learning right now. So I think we're cool with that. The second lecture is going to get into the very basics of working with Python with, it's got a Jupyter notebook that's well documented with a lot of different stuff of how to work with tabular data. I think this is pretty useful in fact, so um, check it out. If you haven't done too much with Python, you've never used pandas before, I highly recommend it. You're going to need to know this. The third lecture is on how to work with gridded data. It takes advantage of all the really efficient array-based methodologies of NumPy to be able to work with what in the subsurface of graded data will be our model. It would be 
all the forms of kind of remote sensing, secondary information, they often are our gridded data to work with. So check that out. If you haven't had exposure to NumPy, that once again will be essential for you, and I hope that this helps you. So once again, I'm Michael Perch. I'm a professor here at the University of Texas at Austin. I work in geostatistics, data analytics, and machine learning. All my courses are recorded and placed online for the world or anyone in the world who's interested in learning about this topic to be able to follow along with my courses. All of the workflows and demonstrations are well documented and put on GitHub. And there will be links as we go along to those GitHub repositories. You can find me on GitHub, YouTube, and Twitter as the Geostats guy. All right. I hope this was helpful. Thank you.